All right, next is the, in a discussion with our, uh, our bioanalytical lab that's doing the uh, DNA research. Um, he asked not to have his name mentioned yet until we get the final report, so I won't mention any names, but um, you'll hear what he has to say. These are mud fossils, and this one specifically you'll see the CAT scan in a moment. All these other ones are being scanned out right now, and uh, I'll have the results of that later. But they've also been sent in for DNA uh, tests, and uh, the results on that are back as well, and you'll hear about that in a second. All right, this is the, um, the finger that is being scanned, it has been scanned, and it's, um, it has a nail bed, fingernail bed. As you can see in the CAT scan, the areolar soft tissue, which is filled with little voids because of the fluids that were in there, uh, that's on the outside, that's standard. And then you can see the bone shadow in here. The soft spongy bone is in the inside, and the harder exterior bone is right there on the outside. It's very clear. Well, I've had several discussions with a very, very high quality people that are in the uh, structural uh, physical <clears throat> anatomy world and they fully agree with everything that I'm saying H however some of the words that I use like investing the skin invests here and things like that they sort of take questions some of that but if they had no factual dispute about what I'm saying it is nobody's arguing that point um, with any substance they just say that the best they can say is that they don't know anything about fossils the architecture looks correct. They have no clue about fossils. Certain amount, you can only get a certain amount of base pairs normally. Right, usually 100 to 200 tops because the DNA is so fragmented because of just the, you know, the degradation, you know, with all the, uh, you know, the years and, you know, wear and tear and things like that. Yeah, yeah. But I was able to, you know, locate these primers that were in that paper that uh, this group had had success with, and that seemed like the best option. And the, you know, our uh, mitochondrial DNA primer that will essentially amplify all types of vertebrates. So, you know, not just human, but any kind of kind of vertebrate life form. And uh, so they were sort of a universal type of fit for these samples because we don't know obviously what the samples consist of. So the you know, the sequence that came back, and it was roughly, you know, for each of these fragments, about 100 base pairs, matched them up in the uh, database, and they matched with the, you know, the human mitochondrial. There's two regions of the mitochondria. One is called the D, like the letter D is in dog, with the D loop. And then the other one, I believe, is for cytochrome B gene. Uh, the mitochondria has several different genes that it uh, consists of, but... These, uh, these primers were specific for those areas of the mitochondrial genome. So, um, yeah, so I, you know, you know, considering where we, you know, started a couple of months ago, that's, uh, you know, those are nice results to have. Yeah, that's Through kind of amazing. And the PCR and, and now the DNA sequencing, so. Wow, and um, how, how refined down is this? I mean, it's in the, in the human genome family, meaning it's not a, 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 a monkey or a primate. I mean, it's a primate, but how refined right, it is. Exactly. Yeah. Now, in the database, it's showing, you know, for that region of sequence that I obtained for these fragments, you know, that they match up with, you know, 100% identity to, you know, the human mitochondrial genome. Again, the D loop, and I, I believe the other region was cytochrome B. I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to double check my notes, but I know the one was the D loop region. Was it? Was there a substantial amount of DNA? I mean, was it some something that you pretty much certain it wasn't contamination or something? That's my point. Yeah, you know, I've I've run the negative controls all along, and I haven't had anything. Uh, you know, the, the idea with negative controls is you want those to always be blank, you know, to see nothing in there. And so the, the negative controls have, uh, you know, not shown any amplification, so, which, which is, again, what you want. So, uh, you know, i you know, confident that what we're seeing is, you know, not any type of contamination from, you know, handling or, or anything like that. So, um you know, the amount of DNA that was in the extractions, too, was, for ancient DNA, it was, it was relatively substantial. So, you know, 
I, again, I, I don't think that there was any kind of contamination with anything. Okay, coming up is a brief discussion with the people that are doing our scanning for the fossils out in uh, Michigan and uh, out there in Ontario. It's Jesse Garant and Associates. I, uh, as you know, I don't know. Did you did you see the video that I sent you about the um, the DNA? Yes, yes, I was on there uh, yesterday. Yeah, the uh, the DNA is a hundred percent human. Wow, that's unbelievable. Hundred percent. And, and that's in two samples. Now, I drilled deeply into these. It was not something on the surface. I mean, and this guy knows what he's doing. This is the latest kind of uh, uh, research and, and investigative tools they have to dig out these, these uh, mitochondrial DNAs. I don't know if you know much about this, but it's a, it's a special piece of the DNA that... Right. Okay, so you, you guys don't understand that. But anyway... Yeah, yeah. They found it, and it's there. I mean, and it's just, I mean, hitting a hundred base pairs in a sequence like that in two samples, <laughs> it's like, wow. you know, I mean, there's just no way in the world it could be an accident.